This is 6th of February 2024 and you're watching Aim On Air where specialising connecting companies with its shareholders is what we do best. Hello and welcome back to Aim On Air. My name is Liam and today I'm pleased to be presenting to you a brand new series called The Drill Down where we take a deep dive on team members of companies that we support shining a spotlight on what they do. Today, I'm pleased to introduce to you Michael Thompson, Resource Geologist at Greatland Gold PLC. Michael is a qualified geologist with over 20 years experience across exploration, development and operational projects across Australia and Africa. He has developed a broad geological skill set focusing on resource geology throughout the entire mining cycle, from early stage discovery through to active mining operations in both open pit and underground environments. Michael's most recent role includes senior roles at the Creasy Group, Eastern Goldfields and Tanami Gold. Welcome to the Aim On Air's drill down, Michael. Yeah, thanks for having me, Liam. Thank you. I like to start my shows with a couple of easy ice-breaking questions to help guests feel at ease. The first question is the topic, and the second is the question on said topic. So, Michael, would you like a question on food, sport or music? Um, let's go with food or sport. Uh, what's your favourite food? Nice and easy. Uh, I, I find of late I've, I've, I get right into my slow cooking, so slow cooked briskets and so forth. Really enjoying that these days. Uh, have you got a particular type of um, wood that you like to cook on? Uh, charcoal, I'm still, it's early days, still experimenting. Uh, a lot of practice, which is probably a good outcome because it involves a lot of eating. <laughs> but, um <laughs> No, it's it's mainly charcoal with a bit of, I guess, standard smoking. So okay, and have you got any particular types? Of, sorry, I'm quite into it too. Uh, any particular type of rubs that you like to use? Yeah, I, I try to make my own, but there's some fantastic oh, ones okay. out there. I, I generally grab one from a shop and then I'll just expand it with what I've got at home and see where I go with it. Amazing. I. I... That's uh, I enjoy doing that too. So I totally know where you're coming from with that, and can understand why why it's you're into it so much. Thank you. So uh, we're going to wind the clock clock back a bit. Uh, where did you grow up? Uh, I grew up here in Perth, so on the outskirts of Perth, um, small farm, but um, far enough out of the city that I didn't really feel like I was part of the city. Um, spent a lot of time outdoors. Good is a fairly good climate here over in Perth, so there's a lot. A lot of warm weather, a lot of lot of outdoor activities that you can do, um, and living on the farm, there was you know a lot of motorbikes, a lot of horses, a lot of so forth. And what were you into in your teens? Yeah, so during school, uh, I think uh, early days, your usual stuff for a teenager. I like, like computer gaming, like hanging out with your mates. Um, really seemed to enjoy science and maths at school. I think it was fairly er- clear early on what I liked and what I didn't like at school. Um, and probably enjoyed watching sport a bit more than I did playing sport, but I, I dabbled with the odd one here and there. Fair enough. Uh, and, and then you went to, I presume you went to university. Where did yeah, you correct, study? Correct. Oh, well, went through a, a Western Australian School of Mines, so locally known as WASM over here. Um, but in a bit of a unique university, you, you start off your career in the city in Perth, uh, in the first year or two, you're pretty much similar to a normal geology degree at a lot of other universities. But one of the key differences is for your end of your degree, you move to a place called Kalgoorlie, which I'm not sure if you're aware, but it's it's a renowned mining town in Western Australia. It's about six hours east of Perth and there's you know, 20,000 people, but a lot of mining. So you, you really get to spend your last couple of years I guess, immersing in, in that industry, getting prepared to enter that industry. Was geology your first choice? Uh, it, on, as I said before, it was science. Uh, it took, a, I guess, a lot of tools of universities and so forth to try to find something I liked. Um, I, di- I did pick geology first, so I think I, I managed to get it right. Um, I did enjoy the... The mixture of outdoors, growing up outdoors a lot, so I really enjoyed that aspect of it, the science, uh, and as well as the the computing side of things, all, all things I enjoyed growing up, so it all felt comfortable as a career. 
Okay, um, that makes sense. And, and moving into your career, could you tell me about your early, j- early days as a geologist? Where did you start out? Uh, I didn't venture far from Kalgoorlie, to be honest. So I spent my first five to ten years mainly in, as a mine geologist, uh, three or four different operations around Kalgoorlie, um, either living in Kalgoorlie or coming back to Perth now and then. But I re- re- really grounded myself on, and that was mainly gold industry, that most of those roles were, um, understanding the process there, understanding what's important to mining and, and really, really enjoyed that time. But it, um, I guess the more experience I had in that space, the more I really wanted to, to explore what came before ge- the mining and that, that kind of led me towards the resource geology side of the role. Uh, wonderful, thank you. Uh, which leads me nicely on to, to my next question. You know, it showed that you focused on resource geology uh, throughout the mining cycle. What was the project that had the early discovery? Early discovery, I guess a lot of them would be near mine discoveries. So you've got active mines and in my first few, role, few roles, you were based at a mine and you were really looking for small deposits or, you know, if you're lucky, a bigger deposit nearby. So quite a few small deposits we found along the way and you bring them from that first discovery and then get them drilled out through the resource phase and get them ready to mine. So we work, worked through a lot of them. Unfortunately, they all were relatively small, but it was still an enjoyable part of the process. Okay. Uh, and, and before you arrived at Greatland, where were you? Uh, my, my last three roles, four roles, have probably been predominantly in Western Australia. Um, I was at the Creasy Group directly before I came to Greatland. Uh, but all those roles were in the project development stage. So it's something had been discovered, but it wasn't yet a mine. So I worked on resource geology in that space, um, defining it and trying to get it ready to mine. Okay. Uh, and bringing it up sort of to, to, to today, really, what attracted you to Greatland? Greatland, oh, that, that, that's an easy one. It, it was Haveron, the deposit. As a geologist, um, it's, it's an amazing deposit to work on. The geology is really interesting. It's, it's a bit different to, to a lot of deposits that you get in WA, which are your more t- typical narrow, high-grade deposits, um, which is still enjoyable. This is just that slight bit different. That, um, that, that, that drew me in, without doubt. That's, um, that's good to hear. What is your role in Greatland now? Um, as we mentioned, my role, resource geology is a key focus for me here. Um, so I guess to explain that, probably explaining what resource geology is compared to, to what we commonly have exploration geology and mine geology, um, I, I think it's it's nice and simple to put it like exploration. Their role is to discover and to find, uh, whereas mining, your role is really to optimize getting the metal out. So resource geology often is is the space between the two where you've found the deposit, um, but you're really not sure what it is. So you need to spend a lot of this time drilling, a lot of these studies we do, a lot of evaluation, interpretation, building up an understanding to get to the point that that you, you know enough to start looking at the economics of it and start looking at whether it's worth being a mine or not. So okay. that's pretty much the area that I'd say real resource geology focuses. Um, and to step into that in a bit more detail on the resource geology, that, that, that involves, as I mentioned, there's a lot of drilling, there's a lot of assays um, and interpretation, which is a lot of that's done by fairly large teams on site. So it's definitely not just a one-person job, but the resource geologist, your role is you grab all that information, you collate all that information and try to get to a point where you've got a really defined product to understand and better use to, to look at the economics. So that, that's been my role with Have Air On. So I get weekly or six-weekly, sorry, data packs from our JV partners and would bring that into our model we look at the new results, interrogate it to what we thought we were going to see, make changes we want to make, and eventually you get to the point where you can build a geological model and that inputs into what we call our resource model. And a resource model 
is what we've announced. We've, we've done two uh, independent resource models at Greatland. Um, and really, again, that is about trying to provide something to our mining team so they can look at each part of the ore body and we, they understand where we think the metal is, where we think the value is, and they can work out the best ways to mine it. So, you know, if, if hopefully that's explained it well enough, but that's kind of where I think my role has sat here at Greatland. So, so you'd have had a, a large hand in um, helping generate this recent uh, resource estimate that came out uh, just before Christmas. Yes, yeah, a lot of work, a lot of work's gone into that. Um, so I'm, I'm the competent person. I sign off on that resource. Um, we 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 also in geology, you know, the geology is such a broad area. It, not every deposit's the same, so it's always good to get additional views on it. And we often go to external cons- experts and consultants, get them to look at our work, come back to us with things to look at, things to assess. Lot, some of it we've looked at, some of it we might not have thought of, but the, we have these checks and balances in place to ensure the model we have it is supported by the data and, and it's in the process is supported by an external consultant as well. I suppose that's quite important. Otherwise, you could you only need to take a, a wrong turn early on in the process and you could have a, something that's not what you're expecting. Yeah, and that, that's where we use, we use our classification in our resources to try to distinguish areas we're really confident that we really understand and to areas where we're fairly sure we've got it right, but it needs more work. And that's where we have our, our measured, our indicated, and our inferred is the lower confidence material in your resource. Okay. Um, just uh, I'm going to go slightly off script here. How, how long does that process take you from when the, the let's say the board say they want to do a new resource estimate? What, what sort of time scale do you sort of set yourself to, to get to being able to say, here you go, here's your resource estimate? Uh, you know, it, it comes down to each deposit by deposit. Um, heavy air on being, you know, it's, it's a world-class asset. It's big. There's, you know, we're over 300,000 metres of drilling there. So there is a lot of work involved. Um, the, the, depending, you know, the, this last resource, I probably finished the last drilling cutoff would have been July, August. There's a lot of checks and balances and validation work and, and building your geology model. Um, and we... You know, it's probably at least a three-month process with one person focused, if not more. That, that's, that's fair enough. Thank you very much for that. Um, where do you see yourself in, in, say, five years' time? Uh, hopefully still here. Um, I re- really enjoy the, the, the team we have here. Um, like I say, the, the, the asset is amazing. Haveron's really, really amazing deposit to work on. Uh, so hopefully here and, the, and, and with the asset in production is where I'd like to be in five years. That's really exciting. Uh, thank you. We, we have to be really careful with any kind of forward-looking statements, uh, but I'm always curious where individuals see companies heading in the future. Where do you see Greatland in, say, five to ten years' time uh, as this company grows? Yeah, no, I agree. It's To me, it's an exciting time. Um, Greatland, um, as I mentioned, having Havron as, you know, you've got this this platform to build from um, is exciting. And from there, you know, be it exploration and new, new, new discoveries would be fantastic. But also using that platform to expand the company through our business development team we have here. Um, as I mentioned, it's, I, I really rate the team that I work with here, a really good group of people. Um, so, you know, we could have further opportunities in that space. Uh, you know, I, I see it it's, as a group of... Uh, I don't know, go-getters may, might be a good term. Everyone's very focused on maximising and optimising our opportunities here, which is really, really good to see. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, Michael Thompson, Resource Geologist for Greatland Gold PLC. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me today uh, to introduce yourself to the shareholders and the future shareholders of the company. Do you have any final words for our viewers today? Yeah, a couple, couple of things. Well, thank you again for having, making time for me. But um, I guess the last point would be, We're just today putting out our updated uh, interactive 3D model, which I I recommend viewers go and have a look at. Um, It might be a bit biased because I look at this in 3D a lot, have it on, but it's very hard to show the deposit and the scale and and the shape of it in a 2D picture. So in a 3D image, like these models where you guys can get in there and, and turn things on and off and rotate it yourself, 
you really get an understanding for what the deposit is and what all the different areas of the deposit are. And hopefully this new update shows the new resource and, and where the growth is and where the things are a bit different to previously. And we're trying to bring that out in the model as well so people can understand where we, we are at at this point in time. So I definitely recommend having a look at that 3D model. Oh, that's grand, Michael. Thank you very much. I will put a link to this in the description below. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, my name is Liam and you've been watching Aim On Air's The Drawdown, where we take a deep dive on team members on companies that we support, shining a spotlight on what they do. And until next time, I bid you good day.